which is basically my body's way of saying, hey, you're in the wrong environment and you're not using your voice. And so really everything that I teach now has come through my own personal lived experience. Um, and I am very fortunate that my connection with my guides allows me to be really in the moment with people and bring through what is most needed for them. And the tools can vary from moment to moment. But a huge tenet of my work in this lifetime, at least at this point, is to bring forward the inner child in everyone and help them to reconnect to not only you know, and work through the trauma and the unhealed things, but also to reconnect to the healed inner child that is there underneath all of those layers of trauma and programming and is really our connection to source and intuition and our joy and our light and all of those amazing things that we want in this world. This is Unconditioning, Discovering the Voice Within, with Whitney and Jenkins. Hello and welcome to the 49th episode of Unconditioning, Discovering the Voice Within, where I bring on guests and we talk about the inner authentic voice and the challenges and the rewards that come from following it. This week, I have with me Katie Sutton. Katie is the founder of Zen Within Academy, and she is the co-author of Ancestors Within, Recognize and Embrace the Gifts of Your Origins. Katie is an intuitive channel, a vibrational healer, and a way shower who supports people on their personal path to wholeness and fulfillment, which is manifested, as she believes, by living as your authentic self. Katie's clients span a broad demographic spectrum and are united in their search for solutions to their life challenges. She and her husband travel across the country leading retreats and workshops where they incorporate her original and transformational 12th dimensional healing techniques and sound healing, which creates tangible and lasting shifts for her clients. She also is really focused on healing uh, the wounded inner child, which seems to be a theme that keeps popping up in my life. And she is kind enough to guide us through a little exercise in grounding and mindfulness. So here is my conversation with Katie Sutton. You're kind of the guide of that, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe we can just kind of drop into Mother Earth and ask her to ground us and Ask her to help us bring through the messages that your listeners need to hear the most and to support us in bringing that through with as much love and grace as possible. And we just appreciate her support so much and grounding us into that. Yeah. Thank you. That felt good. <laughs> <laughs> so you guide people to find their authenticity and their inner voice and in order to be able to do that, you had to go through a lot of things yourself. And so one of the first things that I like to ask my guests is, when was the first time that you realized that you had this inner voice, an authentic voice of your own, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really influenced by your environment or your family or anything around you, but it was something that you could recognize as purely your own? Mm, that's such a beautiful question. Um, I feel like that realization came in for me when I started singing <laughs> and doing mantra and chanting. And um, it was many years ago. I think it, my husband and I did the math. It's been like nine years of us doing sound healing for okay. different groups, yoga, yoga studios and different groups. And we've kind of evolved as sound healing teachers. That's how we kind of got started. And um, I was invited to help lead a kirtan class by a friend. And I didn't even know what kirtan was, which is basically devotional yoga mm -hmm. of singing mantra over and over and over again. And um, I was invited to do that. And then around the same time, I was also invited to um, do sound healing for a yoga class. And I had one singing bowl. My husband had a didgeridoo. Mm -hmm. And there was something that happened in that of me being able to sing um, and play music and bring that information, I, I consider that technology, forward mm -hmm. through my being. And it 
it began to heal my throat chakra, which had been pretty much out of balance my whole life and is still a lovely place of opportunity and growth for me every single day. <laughs> I try to look at it that way. And and so I think when I finally just said yes, when the invitation came, even though I didn't know how I was going to do it or what I was going to do, and I just said yes, and that's kind of been my mantra to just keep saying yes when things get presented to me, even if I don't really know if I have the skills in me or, you know, if I have the why yet, um, and just to say yes. And so I think that was a big opening for me um, that helped me to get into an environment where I felt like I was completely seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I was still in the corporate space at that time, working a corporate job and just doing this kind of on the weekends. Um, So that really started to open for me. And then that snowballed into many other things where I started to find the voice of my inner child. And when she came back to me, that's when I found my voice. Oh, and boy, wow. she had a lot to say. And I had to deal with that for a little while and really deal with her anger and her frustration and her sadness. Um, but yeah, I feel like singing and, and sound healing opened the door for that for me. Incredible. So going back to your inner child for a second, I'm curious, uh, were you brought up in a spiritual environment? Yes and no. Um, So I, my mom is an amazing human and she took me to channelings and herbal tincture making classes and all these amazing like kind of new age hippie things that she was really into and I kind of just went along and was really curious about it and when I was I think 11 or 12 years old I started watching um, some DVDs because we only had two channels of some spiritual teachers that my mom followed and so I was kind of pulling all this information in But compared to how I feel now and really anchored into that path, I think I was really just trying to understand why I was so sensitive Mm -hmm. and why I was here. And so I was exposed to it, but my mind had anchored into this very masculine path of I'm going to be uh, CEO of a technology company. That was like what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I loved computers and technology. And so it was really interesting because there was always this dichotomy in, in my being and in the household because I was exposed to all these things. But I just looked at it as something that I was curious about and something that helped me understand the world. I never thought of it as my path at that time. Mm, Yeah. That's, that's a really interesting combination of a technology and also that's the spiritual and trying to make sense of all of that. (laughs) Yeah, I say that I am CEO of a technology company now. It's just not that kind of technology that I expected. So (laughs) But, but, but now we're using technology to to talk about this and deliver a message. So it it also it all works. Yeah, it all works together. So some of the work that you do um, is around the inner child, like mm-hmm. healing um, and ancestral work, it, it looks like. Mm-hmm. So would you like to talk more about that and and how you came across like wanting to help people with that? Sure. Um, so I, um, in 2018, started to download um, kind of like my healing modality of how I work with energy and went to school for three years at Boulder Psychic Institute and kind of learned how to deal with my empathy because I was in the corporate space and being in that space made me really, really sick. Basically, I had Graves disease, which is a thyroid disorder, chronic fatigue, migraines, like all the list of stress induced things, which is basically my body's way of saying, hey, you're in the wrong environment and you're not using your voice. And so really everything that I teach now has come through my own personal lived experience. Um, And I am very fortunate that my connection with my guides allows me to be really in the moment with people and bring through what is most needed for them. And the tools can vary from moment to moment. But a huge tenet of my work in this lifetime, at least at this point, is to bring forward the inner child in everyone and help them to reconnect to not only you know, and work through the trauma and the unhealed things, but also to reconnect to the healed inner child that is there underneath all of those layers of trauma and programming and is really our connection to source and intuition and our joy and our light and all of those amazing things that we want in this world. And so I spend a lot of time working on that myself. I'm constantly checking in with my own inner child and trying to make sure that she feels happy and safe. And so I bring that into my work. 
And ancestral healing is very similar because when I work with the ancestral piece, it's about kind of clearing out the trauma that we carry on an ancestral lineage standpoint, but really connecting to the strength, courage, and resiliency that comes behind all of that. Because every time we go through a trauma, there's strength, courage, and resiliency that is available to us once we are separated from the wound. And so I look at ancestral healing and inner child healing as a very similar process, even though we're connecting to very different lines of energy. Yeah, I, I could see how those could intertwine for sure. And and looking at things from an inner child perspective, that seems to be popping up a lot for me. It's something that um, I'm encountering more and more, and it, it really brings a compassionate filter into the mix of looking at everyone. Um, as everyone has an inner child and wounds that they're trying to heal. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, I tell people all the time when I'm working with them on relationship conflict that 98, 99% of all conflict is at the inner child level. And so if you're dealing with a spouse or a business partner or a friend or a colleague and you're in conflict, 99% of the time there's an inner child wound that's at play there that is activated in that conflict. And so if you are aware of that inner child and can work with her and them or can work with them and self-soothe, then um, those conflicts kind of get I don't go away completely, but they get fewer and far between because we get triggered as adults, right? <laughs> um, and we will continue to get triggered as adults, but that inner child work really helps to bridge that gap in relationship, I find. Yeah, and it, it seems that you um, probably excel at that as you have developed a company and retreats and workshops with your husband. Mm -hmm. um, so. <laughs> Uh, what what wisdom could you share along those lines of having like a conscious co-creation oh. relationship like that? <laughs> I tell people that being in sacred union is the hardest thing to do on this planet. To be working with one another in conscious co-creation on the spiritual path is so hard. And then we decided to like run four businesses together as well. <laughs> so, you know, we, we just have this ability to work through the really hard stuff and we fight, we have things that come up, we have inner child conflicts. I think he's too controlling sometimes, he thinks I'm too controlling sometimes, but it is this amazing, ability that we have to just drop into the growth there like we'll have the really hard conversations and then be able to kind of come back together and say okay I see the work that I need to do do you see the work that you need to do can we go do that and then after we've moved through that in an individual level let's come back together at a higher frequency with one another and you know it's not easy <laughs> I I look at some of my friends who have partners that are kind of just in a different realm and they're not spiritual and I'm like wow that must be a really interesting relationship I can't imagine living it myself but I wonder how that might feel for them and so there's the grass is always greener in different moments right but I'm I'm very fortunate that I have a partner who has really you know if I look at all of the points on my timeline where I've been at a decision or um, really kind of stuck he has this amazing way of drawing things in that I need to have in my field and just planting the seeds and then eventually I'm like oh I should be doing meditation again that's how I got back in meditation and yoga and so we just have this ability to to support one another in that and I think if you're focused on doing your inner work and you always come back to okay what is the growth that I'm moving through here it can kind of pull you out of that projection that we sometimes get into in relationships and just this week, I've been working with people on getting them into present time in their relationships. Are you operating from what's happening now or from a mm. past wound with that person or another person? And, you know, when we have that present time lens, we're able to move forward so much more easily. Yeah. And it seems like an, an opportunity to have a mirror uh, in front of you, too, to remind you of your own authenticity also. Absolutely. That is, I think, the most important gift in any relationship is that they are mirroring all the things that we are afraid to be or are. <laughs> it's always <laughs> one of two, right? We're either afraid to be that or we are that. And so if I am frustrated by something that my partner is doing, oftentimes it's either I'm totally afraid to be that 
or I am that. And so when I realize that that is the mirror and I have an ability to drop in and say, okay, what is the work for me to do? Because I really can't change him, right? All I can do is shift me. Oftentimes what happens is that thing that's driving me crazy no longer drives me crazy, Mm -hmm. right? And I think that's a really fine balance because sometimes you can get into that mirror place if you're in a narcissistic or codependent relationship and that's not healthy. So it has to start from a healthy foundation. Right. And, and that requires courage, too, of also being able to connect to our inner voice and, and our throat chakra and be able to communicate um, our needs and desires and wants. Yeah, that's an ever-evolving process for me. I did not grow up in a household where we talked about emotions, even though my, my mom was very spiritually inclined and my dad is you know, very heart open. We just didn't talk about our feelings. And so to be a really sensitive empath in that environment, feeling everything that nobody's talking about was really hard. And so I find that speaking my voice and speaking truth into things that I'm seeing and feeling for me is really important to open the door for my partner to do the same because he grew up in a very similar household where emotions weren't really talked about and he's in a masculine body and it's even harder. Um, And so when I use my voice, oftentimes that's what kind of catapults us forward. Even if it doesn't come out in the way that I want it to, if it comes out in shadow or in projection, it's normally that kind of release that allows us to move through the hard things. Yeah. And, and so when you work with your clients, uh, how do you help them access that? Yeah. So, um, it depends. Um, oftentimes when I drop into session with people, what I do first is just ask them for their name and go through a prayer of intention. And I do an energy scan in their field. And the reason for that, before they tell me anything about them, is I want to go in and just see their field separate from what they think is going on. And when I share that, oftentimes what will happen is that the person kind of immediately begins crying because they're fully seen. I may see something in somebody's field that they've been hiding from everybody in their life because they're trying to be strong. And in that moment when they're fully seen, there's something that happens kind of a little disarming, right? Of like to be fully seen and as an empath and a sensitive myself, if somebody fully sees me, it feels like such an honor. And so I open with that and um, that generally kind of gets our conversation flowing and we have a beautiful back and forth of um, discussion about the things that I see in their field, the things that they're experiencing. And then at the very end, we go through a very targeted activation that's specific to them. And it can be an inner child reclamation, a soul healing, a soul reclamation from maybe a divorce that they went through or a trauma that they went through. It might be an ancestral healing. And sometimes that comes through with um, like an actual English activation. And sometimes it's a tonal healing, um, depending on what the person is ready to receive and what their mental body needs. Um, but really, my ultimate goal is to just clear away as much as I can so that they can be in an empowered place. And that's really the important part. Yeah, and the empowerment um, and the confidence behind the voice. Yeah. 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 Um, so you work with the chakra system. Mm-hmm. And I think most people are kind of familiar with seven of them, but mm-hmm. you work with 12 of them. I do. Would mm-hmm. you like to uh, go into that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So um, in 2018, 2019, when my healing modality came in, I had had been activated into my 12, my full 12 chakra system. Actually, we have many more than that, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and there was a huge shift in my being of just having much more space to be me when that happened. And so people are aware of the seven chakras in the body. That's kind of the traditional known energy centers. But we have uh, energy centers that exist kind of beyond the body as well. Specifically, um, I'll talk about a couple of them. The earth star chakra that exists beneath our feet, about 18 inches beneath our feet. It's kind of the master grounder for our whole energy field. And, um, you know, that energy center, if it's not activated, then we can have a really hard time being here on this planet. And when that became activated for me, it was like, oh, I had been grounding through my root chakra and, and connecting into the earth that way. When the earth star chakra came online, it was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing here. <laughs> right? There was like this realization of, oh, I'm really here. I'm really in a body, right? This feels really good to be in a body. Sometimes, sometimes it's also really hard. Yeah. And so I work with that expanded system because there's a lot of information 
information in those transpersonal chakras that exist beyond the body. Um, another one that I like to talk about is the, in my system, it's the 11th chakra, which is the soul star chakra. And it's where all of our past life information lives. And it's where we often get hung up in these karmic loops that we keep going in with people. And so working with that energy center can free us from a lot of really confusing energy that we can't make sense of in this lifetime. And so when that full 12 chakra system is open, what we're really working with is kind of an expanded toroidal field, which is our magnetic field that exists around us. And we just have this sense of openness and connection to both source and earth. And I consider us uh, having the ability to ground into both source and the earth. And when we have that center channel open, we can receive information and creativity and flow much more easily. Uh, that's super interesting to like think of the duality of that um, mm. <laughs> and and how important it is to be connected to both places because uh, if you're not, then a lot of things don't make sense. Absolutely. A big part of my work is in balancing the masculine and feminine energies in the body, the being and the doing energies. And we have templates of that. So our template of the feminine energy is our connection to the earth and our template of our masculine energy is that connection to source, right? And both contain both, but we have these poles in our body, right? Our positive and negative poles. And if we don't have those open and we don't have that connection flowing, we have anxiety, we have dis-ease process in the body, we have emotional instability, we have all of the things that we typically diagnose on this planet can be shifted when we have an open flow in our energy body. And so so when that flow isn't operating, all those things kind of come to the surface, but that flow has to be returned in order for those things to resolve. And so we kind of exist in this balance point between heaven and earth. We're bridges, right? And when we're, when we have those poles open, we can, can do that work more efficiently. Yeah, that's very important work right now, I think, mm -hmm. as we're in a very interesting time. Yes. Do you have any wisdom uh, <laughs> that you can provide about where we are and where we might be going and how we can do that um, in a way that grounds us and connects yeah. us with source at the same time. I believe that we have crossed a threshold in and are moving towards unity. I think that we actually crossed that threshold back in 2012 and we've been continuing to make that choice over and over and over again as we've been presented with different challenges on this planet. And so my view of where we're headed is actually very optimistic. I was thinking about that this morning in meditation that, you know, a big tenant of my work now is to bring in the new earth now and understand that it's already here and we have to anchor it at an individual level. We have to understand that we are the creators of our reality. We have a lot of control and empowerment energy available to us as individuals. And we're seeing that with people leaving corporate jobs and you know, starting their own businesses and leaving the medical system and all these things around us, these systems around us are shifting. Mm -hmm. And I, I do see that for the next, you know, I hate to say it, probably the next 10 years, we're going to have a lot of chaotic energy around us because these systems have to dismantle and be rebuilt and new. And, you know, and so one of the things that I keep reminding myself and others about is that don't anchor into the chaos and the duality, anchor into the unity that you already see, because when we turn our focus towards that unity, it expands. And so it's not, not to say that we can't be aware of what's happening on this planet and have compassion and do work around that and certainly follow causes and those kinds of things that matter to you. But if that's all that you focus on, you're going to have a really hard time being in your joy. And so there has to be a balance of focusing even in your own life on where things are flowing. You know, when people say, I'm feeling really stuck here, I said, well, what's flowing in your life? How can you refocus your attention to that so that you can get back in that place? of ease and then in that place of ease you can have new ideas that come in to help those stuck areas because if you're just constantly focusing on where the bad things are happening and where that stuck energy is we need a break sometimes we need to pull out of that and focus on the flow and so I find that that's a really effective tool for me and for my clients to help them kind of continue to move forward and you know if you find that there's a lot of fear coming up for you 
by all means, please don't repress it and suppress it and pretend that it doesn't exist, right? Journal about it, talk about it, get it out so that you don't have that living inside your body because I think that's where a lot of our dis-ease comes from in our physical bodies. But um, also don't um, feel like you are responsible for saving the whole planet. That's something that I've had to work through in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's a delicate balance of having an awareness without being attached to any sort of outcome. I feel. Yeah, that that non-attachment is really important. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that makes the work that you do even in more significant and important as we move forward, um, because it seems like the individual transformation is going to have a ripple effect um, on an even greater level as we navigate the chaos. Absolutely. I feel that, um, you know, we've tried the top down approach hasn't worked for us so well. And, you know, it's clear to me that every person who wakes up and steps into their empowerment and their truth and using their voice, that that creates a huge ripple effect out into the world around us. And when you do that in your life, even just the people in your sphere of influence are able to witness that and go, hey, how did you do that? What's happening for you? You look so different than you were a year ago. And and I, I think that's an important way to affect change because it's honoring everybody's unique path right? There's nobody that's going to be able to come in and just say, hey, this is how we're going to solve everything. Because we all are individual beings. And so even in unity consciousness, it's not same, same. We have to step into our unique qualities and our unique voice and our unique truth. And as we do that, the solutions that we need to solve the problems on this planet, because we have many that need to be solved. I'm, I'm very confident that we have all the answers here. You know, when I check in with my guides about, you know, the things that are going on with climate change and all these different things that are, are happening in our planet, um, I am always told that we have all the answers that we need. We're just using our resources to solve the wrong problems most of the time. Yes, and and I think this also goes back to our inner child and our conditioning, um, mm-hmm. and in that we don't have all the answers. And as we uncover an uncondition, as the title of this podcast, uh, we can get to the core of that we already know everything that we need and have all of the resources that we already need to know. Abs- absolutely, that inner child is a super wise being. You know, I I often marvel at when I work with children or I do crystal gritting classes with kids sometimes and they're like, oh, I can feel this crystal and I know exactly what it's doing for me. And I'm like, great, then you have all the answers. I don't even need to teach you anything. Right. Right. And they're just in that place of curiosity and knowing and nobody has told them yet, hopefully, that they that they're imagining it or they don't they don't know what they're talking about. Right. And they're so close to source, right? When you're a little kid, you have just barely incarnated. (laughs) There's not a lot of layers between you and source still. And so that's a deep place of truth and wisdom. But we don't, we don't think of it that way. We put children into schools that tell them that they need to know this in order to be wise, right? And so I think we're seeing a lot of that happen. You know, I'm I'm not surprised that the school system is the first thing that I'm seeing kind of fall apart, honestly, and and be rebuilt. um, Because I think it starts with the kids. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I remember, like, even when I was a kid, um, being so fearful of the, of the things that were being thrown at me just going to school um, and being conditioned um, into all of the rules and regulations of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing to work with people on societal conditioning programming. And I see, you know, there's religious program, there's government programming, there's medical system programming, there right. is school system programming, there's a lot. And it's not to say that all those systems are bad or wrong. It's just that if it takes you out of your empowerment and your truth and you are doing something because you've been told to do it, it may not be in alignment for you. And there's some things to decondition or uncondition in that. Yeah. So you mentioned that you might want to do a little experiment with our listeners um, in a throat chakra activation, perhaps. Yeah, I would love to do that. So 
Um, if, if you're not driving, I'll invite you to close your eyes. <laughs> I know some people <laughs> might be listening to this while driving. But if not, just softening your, your gaze and dropping into your body for a moment. And I always start any activation by kind of helping people to anchor into the earth and to source. And so I'm going to invite whoever's listening to this to just imagine their heart right in the center of their heart space, right over their sternum, their heart chakra. And if you are not familiar with working with the chakra system, that's okay. Just tune into that part of your body and just take some deep breaths and draw light into the body with the inhale and exhale any tension or stress that you may have that you're ready to release. And we're just going to envision this heart chakra as a ball of light that is expanding and contracting. And so I always begin with the heart because it's that bridge point, that waypoint between heaven and earth. And so from that heart space, imagine that you can draw a line of light and energy down through your body and drop into the center of Mother Earth. She has a heart just like you do. And imagine that as you breathe in and as you breathe out, that your heart is coming into alignment with hers. And so in this way, we're opening up a beautiful grounded connection between your body and the earth so that anything that we release today has a beautiful outlet to be released down into the earth so that she can transmute it. And just breathe into that connection. Maybe you're needing some energy. Maybe you're needing some vitality. Maybe you're needing some courage. And see if you can receive that from the mother, from the divine mother, and bring that light into your body. And just see it as a color flowing into your being. And from that space of openness and connection to the earth, I'll invite you to do the same with source. And so it's a little harder to visualize source. So I like to use the sun because it's a tangible thing that we can anchor into. And so in your mind's eye, draw a line of energy from your heart all the way up to the sun, all the way up through the ethers, all the way up to the sun, opening that connection, that above space. And the sun is such a keeper of wisdom for us and light codes and information and vitality. And so draw that back into your body. And, you know, when we're working on activating our voice, it's often fear that keeps us out of our voice and out of uh, our place of truth. And it's often judgment that also keeps us out of our place of truth. And so as you're bringing this light into your body, just allow it to move through that whole center channel. It's kind of opening up that space and specifically that space between the heart and the throat. See if you can allow that light to bounce back and forth between the heart and the throat. Almost as if you have a light paintbrush that you can open those two chakras into one another. Because it doesn't really do us a lot of good to have our throat open if we don't know what our truth is from our heart. And so we want to connect these two energy centers and then take some exhales And I'll invite the listeners to, if they feel like it, to bring in a soft tone as they release this energy of constriction and judgment and unworthiness. I'm just seeing a lot of unworthiness being released here. And so just take some nice deep breaths. And as you're breathing here, imagine that this light that's coming from source and this light that's coming in from the earth is activating you into your highest truth in this moment. And I like to invite my students and my clients to imagine a color that represents them being in their highest truth. I call this their truth color. And begin to see that color flowing through this center channel and activating those chakras into their highest truth in this moment. Whatever that may be, maybe they need to have a hard conversation with a spouse or a partner, or maybe they need to ask for a raise at work. And so draw that truth color, which is really their power color, into their body. And breathe into that energy for just a moment. And if there's anything that you need to release, you might yawn, you might have a little burp that comes up. That's an energy release too. The body might need to move a little bit. Just let some of that tension in your being release so that you can be in this place of truth. And then I always like to end by asking for help. And so if you are not sure what to say, you're not sure how to be in this place of truth, you're not sure ask for some support from source whatever you believe in from the earth from guides if you have a connection with them from the angelic realm and just ask for what you need in this moment and let that intention be part of your truth here and as you breathe into that feel that expand in your body and in your field and be sent out as a silent request out into the universe and it's also okay to say it out loud 
And just know that you are loved unconditionally and you are supported by earth and by source. You have everything that you need to be what you want to be in this lifetime. And if you have your eyes closed, you gently can open them and we thank Mother Earth and Source for supporting us. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so after that, I'm sure that people are going to want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So how can they work with you and what does that process look like? Sure. So I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. It takes um, six to eight weeks to get on my calendar most times right now. Um, I also offer a monthly online healing circle that um, we do as a group. And so there's a topic that comes in and it supports wherever we are as a collective right now. And so we do that in community. And so there's a channel teaching that comes in from my guides and an activation, kind of like what we just did. And um, I'm launching um, now in this moment in September, but it's going to be open for enrollment for the next year, um, the New Earth Now School, which is really for spiritual seekers who want to find their voice, want to find their gifts, um, want to activate into their New Earth Now, whatever that looks like, whatever their next step is for them now. And our first volume of the course is going to be focused on ancient body wisdom and activating our understanding that we can heal our bodies from the inside out and we have the capability to do that and we've forgotten that over the many thousands of years that we've kind of been in that place of disempowerment. So zenwithinacademy.com and newearthnowschool.com are my two sites that people can get in touch with me on. Thank you so much. Um, I love those offerings. I'm going to check them out myself. Um, so I have like one last question that I usually ask to wrap up the conversation. And that question is, if your inner voice had a billboard, what would it say to the world? <laughs> what I saw immediately flashing in bold letters was just do it now. <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of what I work through in this lifetime, I say yes to things and then all of the fear comes up afterwards. And it's that initial knowing, that initial voice that comes in and then we, we anchor into it and then we allow the voices of everyone else around us and all of the conditioning that we have to talk us out of it. And so I think coming back to that centered place and coming back to that knowing that we have initially and that spark that we feel, which is really our inner child's truth and doing your best not to allow anybody else to influence that or take you out of that awareness and finding your way back to it when you need to, that would be my billboard message. Just do it now. Excellent. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Um, I'm going to add all of your links into the show notes so that people can access those very easily and quickly. And yeah. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you're listening and you like what you hear, please consider subscribing and rating this podcast as it really helps get this podcast out to other people who might be interested in hearing it but don't know about it yet. And also, if you'd like to contact me or reach me, you can reach me at unconditioningpodcast at gmail.com or unconditioningpodcast on Instagram. Thank you so much. And until next time... Stay tuned in to you.